Joining us now is Ojinika Oji Ope with stories trending around the world. Hello, Jinix. Good morning, Good Dr. Morning. Abati. How are you this morning? morning. Good. Perfect. Good morning, Ayo. How are you this morning? Good. Morning. Good. Thank Good morning, you. Rufai. Show up, ma. Not so good after Hello. all the news uh, going on uh, in Nigeria. Well, all right, let's begin what's trending in Play 2 State, where no fewer than 30 people, including women and children, were killed by terrorists in Mangu local government area of the state. The attack, which occurred on Tuesday night, despite the curfew imposed on the local government, saw houses, including churches, being burnt down. This is Oasis Church being destroyed by Muslim Muslims in our village, in our area. Please, we need in, we need help. We need help. We need security help. We need everybody's help. Please pray for us. This is Oasis Church in in Kwaslair, Mongol local government. My heart goes out to the family members of those 30 victims who died. Um, yesterday there was this rhetoric on social media, you know, people were calling it ethnic cleansing or religious cleansing. Let me take this tweet from Sarah who actually posted a video of a man that was butchered. I, I, I mean, in the transcription, it appeared that the man had, you know, was a, a, a Christian and the people that were killing him uh, were Muslims. Uh, this person wrote, uh, breaking, Mangu village in Plato State is still under attack by Islamic extremists. Churches are being burnt down and Christians are being murdered on sight. Where is the government? Where are the imams to breed peace? Nigerians in the Middle Belt are not safe. Well, Ufode wrote, it's really sad how Christians in Plato State have been brainwashed into believing that any attacks on them are done by Muslims making specific references to Fulanis, this dangerous rhetoric perpetrates prejudice and hatred towards Muslims and only serves to further divide communities. It is important to condemn all acts of violence, regardless of the perpetrator's religion, and work towards promoting peace and understanding between different religious groups. Blaming one group for the action of a few only leads to further violence and discrimination. While well, Sambo wrote, Killings are still happening in Mangu town of Plato State. Muslims are being chased out of their homes and butchered despite the 24 hours curfew imposed by the governor. Residents are claiming that even the Operation Rainbow from the police department are shooting down Muslims, which means they have taken a side in the fight. All these are happening on the watch of a Muslim president and vice president. That's the rhetoric uh, online. Uh, Rufai, go ahead. You see, with those three reports you read, there you see the dastardly effect of people using mediums to incite. And we should be careful. And that's why all in all, we should call for harmony, have a rounded view. That last tweet said Muslims are the ones being killed. Under a Muslim, Muslim president or vice president, that's an incitement. Absolutely. It was a deliberate incitement skew the narrative and all of that. I think what we should focus on is the failure of the security authority and the state to be able to stem the tide. And it should not be thrown into the throngs of religiosity. We should fight the assailants that are disrupting the peace of the area and not make it about religion. Churches are burnt, I also hear mosques are burnt. But what is most important is how can we keep the peace? Because you see, it is narrative like that, that under Muslim, Muslim president. And you see, it is narrative like that that feed into our election process. But I'm sure Nigerians now know, for those that fooled themselves during the elections, I've voted along religious or ethnic lines, that, like the Yorubas would say, Iya Okola, what it means is that suffering does not know your tribe or religion. Absolutely. It is about getting competent leaders that can stem the tide. Oji, there were killings in December. 
The security agents said they were going to get on top of it. They did condolence visits. They made pity party. Yes. The president met with chief of staffs and all of that. But nothing has happened. And I ask again, where is the president at a time like this? A la France. Right. A la France. So when you see a complete failure of states, let us tackle it and let us not push it along the lines of fanning and increasing religion. You see, that's why some people make complaints about social media. But it is also incumbent on us as consumers to make clarity and bring a better narrative that it's not about baiting religion or tribe against each other. It's about going out there and solving the problem once and for all. Because when we start the beginning of the baiting of religion and tribe and all of that, we will not end at it. Why is that we've increasingly had crisis of different coloration since God knows where on the plateau? Why is it that the plateau is not safe? What can the government do to restore safety and security to the plateau? Mm -hmm. Many questions. That should be the concern. A lot of questions uh, you have posed and you've sounded the right notes here. There should be no religious device. We should condemn any sort of violence. Only yesterday we called on the security forces to even look into those uh, vigilante groups that were, you know, unveiled uh, this week by the Kaltahore uh, uh, group, the Meeti Ala Kaltahore group. And, you know, we hear that this incident occurred because of some sort of cattle rustling. 30 people, 30 Nigerians, over 30 that we're hearing. Something needs to give. This needs to stop. May their souls rest in peace. Meanwhile, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu embarked on a private visit to France on Wednesday, marking his third private visit to a foreign country since he was elected president. Shortly after winning the presidential election last year, Tinubu departed for Paris, well, according to his media aide at the time. The trip was to enable the president rest and prepare for lesser Hajj in Saudi Arabia. Months later in June, after attending the Global Financial Pact Summit in France, the presidency announced that Tinubu headed to London on a short private visit. Well, in a statement by presidential spokesperson Ajuri Ngalali on Wednesday, Tinubu will return to the country in the first week of February. A lot to discuss here as well. But meanwhile, the special advisor, information and strategy to President Tinubu, Bayon Onuga on Wednesday, refuted claims of any intention to relocate the federal capital territory to Lagos, labeling the allegations as politically motivated tactics by opponents. The president's media aide, in a post on X, criticized those perpetrating the allegations as dishonest actors seeking attention through ethnic and religious and regional divides. His tweets reads in part, President Tinubu has no plan whatsoever to move the federal capital to Lagos. The rumor first surfaced during the campaign last year by opponents looking for all manners of weapons to stop him. We trashed it. Those peddling it are new, are dishonest, ethnic and regional champions trying to draw attention to themselves. Abuja has come to stay. It is backed by law. The movement of FAN a department of aviation ministry to Lagos, where it was based before former minister Hadi Sirika moved it to Abuja during the last administration, does not amount to moving the FCT to Lagos. The administrative move should have attracted scant attention as Lagos is the commercial capital and the hub of aviation business in Nigeria. Fans should be nowhere else but near the industry it regulates. Fans will still maintain some presence in Abuja, as it is not a wholesale movement. Similarly, the movement of some departments of the CBN to Lagos should not trigger any hopula. All those pushing this campaign of falsehood know they are playing politics, albeit a dangerous politics, to pit the North against the South. Well, by your statement, it's coming after Senator Ali Ndume, the chairman Senate Committee on the Army, on Tuesday warned the president that there will be political consequences if he insists on moving some departments of the CBN of Nigeria, Central Bank of Nigeria, and Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria headquarters to Lagos. Let's take a listen. You know, this is a consensus because we only have one federal capital, and that is Abuja. All these Lagos boys that are thinking that Lagos is Nigeria are just misinforming or advising uh, uh, the president wrongly. The regulators 
of the financial institutions are supposed to be or are in Abuja? Do you want them to move back to where, because you say uh, uh, Lagos is the uh, commercial uh, capital? This is one of the mistakes, and I'm sure I mean, Mr. President will reverse it because it doesn't work. Uh, you can't have two capital. Is the CBN uh, governor going to be operating from Lagos and the headquarters of the CBN is in Lagos? Or do you now say, now say that because uh, oil, ma majority of our oil is extracted from South-South, you take an NPC to uh, South-South? Or is it uh, because Nigeria's agricultural distance is more in the north, you take Ministry of Agric to, 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 to anywhere in the north? It doesn't work that way. And that is one of the problems that is cropping up. But I'm very sure, I'm very confident that uh, Mr. President will look at this because he's a nationalist, not uh, just a, uh, a Lagos man. Some of these people think that, uh, I'll repeat, think of, some of them think that Lagos is Nigeria. Lagos is not Nigeria. Well, all right. Uh, Senator Ali Ndume there talking about, uh, you know, Tinubu being misled by Lagos boys. I believe you guys treated this a little bit, but there was no sound bite. So I thought it was important to highlight this. So there will be no, um, you know, people saying that we, he was um, quoted out of context. But uh, Boya Anonega, you know, made a very solid point, as well as uh, Ali Ndume saying that Tinubu is a nationalist. And the fact that, you know, uh, Fan was in Lagos before it was moved back to Leg uh, Abuja and has clarified that this is all political, as well as a tenable trip to France. Okay, we discussed this yesterday, but it's good because the story is still out there. Yes. So we might as well visit it again. The main point by Mr. Bayononuga is that this has been politicized and that the Tinubu administration has no plans whatsoever to move the federal capital territory back to Lagos. After all, it was a, it was a matter of law. You know, the decision taken was not an arbitrary decision. The committee was set up and the Federal Capital Territory was chosen when under uh, General Babangida, uh, Federal Capital Territory was chosen. So the politics that is being played is unfortunate, most unfortunate. But um, yesterday I said uh, Senator uh, Ali Ndume was just blowing hot hair. You know, all those things he was saying. Uh, there will be consequences, there will be this and that. You know, he, funny enough, he's chief whip. What is the role of a chief whip? Chief whips are supposed to support, support the position of their parties, Absolutely. you know, the leadership of their party. So this is a classical example of a chief whip, you know, turning against the leader of his own uh, uh, party. So maybe the chief whip himself needs to be whipped into line. <laughs> you know, if, if we're talking politics. Right. But beyond that, you know, the issue again is that there have been other commentators on the subject. Right. Now, I read one statement by someone who said, look, most of these people are saying, don't move CBN, don't move this to Lagos. That these are persons who have been put there by their influential sponsors and fathers who do not want to come to Lagos, who are happy just being within the system and being unproductive. That's one view. Second view, I think by Senator Akime, who is a representative of Kugi West. He said, Ali Ndume is on his own. That he's speaking for himself, he's not speaking for the North for whatever reasons that are best known to him. So nobody should take Ali Ndume's position as the position of the North on the matter. So that's another view. A third view with regard to CBN is that of Emir Sanusi uh, Lamedo. Right. Emir Lamedo Sanusi has said that it is a good decision to move some departments of the CBN to Lagos because when he was CBN governor, he in fact wanted to do the same thing, to improve efficiency. And we've been making the point about efficiency. If these moves will increase efficiency, then we could do it. We better do it. He said in his time he wanted to move two deputy governors in charge of operations and all of that to Lagos. Because most of the uh, banks, their headquarters, they are in Lagos. And that he thought it would improve efficiency. Now, uh, Emi Asanusi is a northerner. And that's why you see that you know, you can't, nobody should say Ali Ndume is speaking for the North. He's speaking for himself. Okay, that's that about that. So nobody should play politics with these things. If it's right. for efficiency in terms of operation, that's fine. Second point has to do with the trip of President Tinubu to uh, France. Now, it raises questions. Some people will say, why is he always going to France? On private visits. Private visit is the word. Private visit. Right. Why is it not private visit to US? Why is it not private visit to London? 
Why is it not a no, private visit? It was a private visit to London. Uh, okay. That was after the first. Well, no, that one was described as a stopover. The stop was uh, They said it was a stopover. But it was to London. However, yes, to okay. London, where he spent additional right. uh, one week or so. So, as a result of this, people are suspicious. They think that this is a case of medical tourism. But nobody has been able to establish it. However, the speculation about whether it's for health reasons or not is not new. I've cited the example before on this program of President Grover Cleveland of the United States. He's 22nd and 24th president of the uh, United States. Now, during his second term, he had mouth cancer. He disappeared for a few days to go and have surgery on ISIS. Nobody could find him. At a time when America was having serious issues with the economy, mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh, issues. People right. say, how can the president of America disappear when there is so much crisis within the country? So that's what happens with the uh, uh, president. Now, at that time, the journalist who reported the story was victimized. He was even sacked from his job until Matthew Algeo wrote a book titled, The President is a Sick Man, and revealed the truth that, in fact, the president disappeared to go and have a medical surgery on high seas. So a president is the property of the people. Right. If the president is going to disappear, people want to know the details. Yes. He cannot go away. Yes. Away without leave. No. He cannot just disappear like Absolutely that. Not. And this one he has not disappeared. He says private visit. I think you know there's some cleverness there. A president is entitled to private visit, okay. he's entitled to official visit. Is uh, entitled to state visit. Right. Is entitled to working visit. These are the four categories right. of uh, you know uh, 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 of visit right. for a president under the diplomatic uh, calendar. Mm -hmm. But Nigerians say we want to know what this private visit <laughs> is all about. Is it to go and attend the Pepper Soup Party, the Jollof Rice right. Party, or is it to go and what is it about? It's a private so visit. So it's uh, governor, uh, is the president himself we and his managers know. that have. Uh, you know, uh, generated this uh, request. Okay, but okay. are there Nigerian journalists right. who, like the, that American journalist of 1893, yeah. can do investigative journalism and tell us the truth? I pose that to you, Dr. Abati. You are up to the task. <laughs> We're waiting for your report. With all the things <laughs> I do, I'll be doing about I, you're up to, you're up to the task. Receipts. You're up to the task. I'm sure you can do it. We, we, are wait, do we are waiting that report. Let me take this story for you, Ayo. We're talking about, you know, moving the uh, fan and all of those uh, uh, agencies to Lagos, talking about Lagos. The governor of the state, Babajide Sonwolu, on Wednesday, received U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken at the presidential wing of the Mortala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. Blinken, who is on a six-day African tour to foster future economic partnerships as well as improve relations with the continent, visited Lagos to commission the American Corner, a tech-enabled space aimed at supporting youth innovation, entrepreneurship, and creativity in Nigeria. Governor Sonwulu posted his meeting with Blinken on X, stating that Lagos State is open to strengthening diplomatic ties and discussing uh, shared interest for a brighter future. Well, the governor also posted his meeting with the Prime Minister of Grenada, Dixon Mitchell, where he presented a miniature Blue Line Rail. Sonwulu said he visited the island to engage in extensive discussions on various aspects of bilateral relations, focusing particularly on tourism, agriculture, and other economic interests. He added that he's also had the opportunity to attend some social events to further strengthen the ties between Nigeria and Grenada. I mean, the governor there meeting a lot of very important people. Yeah. Ayo, I mean, that uh, story from uh, Grenada got a lot of attention yes. as well. There were a lot of blogs that were talking about the fact that, ah, you know, the governor went to Galavant. He didn't really go for any, you know, anything special. Yeah. I mean, we pose it to the governor there to respond to some of those allegations because they are really, really sad allegations very if you sad. come to think about it. But he did go out there and he posted that he met with the prime minister and that's what he went there for.
Over to you. I, it's such a great thing to be able to combine business and pleasure, Absolutely. isn't it? At least I if you're it. working, you can also have an opportunity. Lagos is a very difficult city to govern. Over 20 million people. In fact, Lagos can be said to be like many countries around the world. I mean, when the Secretary of State came to Nigeria, the only state he visited as site from the federal capital territory was Lagos State. So you wouldn't begrudge the governor some leisure time because it takes a lot of yeah. energy and work to govern a state like Lagos. Absolutely. However, the big questions yes. are who funded that trip? Then right. if you want to go for a holiday in Grenada, that's it's all your prerogative. If you want to attend social events and parties, because right. there are videos already out of him enjoying himself, and thankfully, his um, his press, um, his spokesperson he said, Grenada. yeah, yeah, he went for a party. He, he did. Really? Whose yeah, party? Yeah. Well, well, well no, it, was a, it, was a, it was a very important woman. <laughs> and they went to... Very important woman. Very important woman. That took our governor in Lagos to yeah. Grenada. No, 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 no. Wait, hold on. Let me, let me just wrap up. Who's so, that woman? So, so the governor went to see. Went up, up, I, 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 I tried to see. He went to see the went, prime minister no, no. and had took they, the opportunity to have. They didn't a establish party. that. We don't know which well, came that's first. What he put, oh, okay, we don't know which whether that was the party he went to and then he used the opportunity to see. Woman? No, the, he said he went to, to see Grenada. the prime minister and they used the and he opportunity coincided to with the party. A okay, all right. Okay, so well, all right. Exactly. So he coincided. Let me just say something. Let me just say something. Let me just say something about that trip. Can you guys think about that trip? Is what Nigerians are asking. Yes. The time when the um, visit to the prime minister ended and the party started, who was paying for that? All right. Who was okay. funding that? Was well, it Lagos right. State's money? Because that's what we, people were. But he's entitled to. Out of diplomacy. diplomacy. Okay. Person <laughs> to person <laughs> diplomacy. <laughs> so please, let shall us we take our final put story? it in context? Well, all right. Now in context, we shall take our final story. The Nigerian police have reacted to a now viral video showing some Nigerians identifying themselves as LGBTQ persons. The self-confessed LGBTQ members spoke about their sexuality and the misconceptions people have about them. In a video challenge on TikTok, while reacting in a post on X, police spokesperson Olumui Wadejobi described them as criminals who will be prosecuted. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. I'm a lesbian, masculine presenting woman. And of course, people always ask me if I'm a footballer. I'm pansexual. Of course, everyone thinks I'm a prostitute. I'm a lesbian with kids. Of course, people want to know how I've got them. I'm an heterosexual trans man. Of course, people think I'm gay. I'm a trans man. Of course, people always want to know what is down there. I'm queer. Of course, people will, be, will think and wonder why I behave more like a man than a woman. I'm mass. Of course, people see ask me why I act like a boy. I'm not binary. Of course, people want me to pick if I'm a man or a woman, but who cares? Dr. Bati, over to you really quickly. Okay, I mean, this what is a has big story. This here. is uh, yeah. what they call, of, of course, challenge yeah. on TikTok, of challenge in well. which certain persons were defending the rights of the LGBTQ. But Adejobi Muiwa is also right, the police spokesperson, when he says it's criminal. Yeah. We have the law. In Nigeria, it's yeah, criminal. Same sex marriage prohibition act, in Nigeria. which provides. 14 years imprisonment right. for anybody who is involved, 10 years for anybody who eats and abets. Mm -hmm. And then in the criminal code for the southern part of Nigeria, and in the penal code, there's also 14 years All imprisonment right. penalty. Right. But those who are arguing for the rights of the LGBTQ, they are quoting section 40 of the it's Constitution. They are yeah. quoting article yeah. 2, 3, 9, 10, 11 Absolutely. of the African Charter on Peoples and Human Rights, Human rights. saying That's that they have point. the right for freedom That's of assembly. But in Nigeria, right. the law says it's a criminal offense. Well, I'd like to thank you all to, for your great to analysis in, as uh, always. In Tana Perusa, yeah. against the order of nature. <laughs> That's what the law mm, says. So. Absolutely. Well done, Dr. Abati. The legendary Dr. Abati. Well, all right. Person to person diplomacy. <laughs> That's all I have for you guys on What's Trending Today. I'll see you all tomorrow.